The Big Story. Where are we? Just outside of town. I want to go home. Let's go home. What are you stopping for? I'm going to let you out for good. You're not going any further. What are you doing? Putting an end to your two time and to your cheat. <laughs> the big story. The story you're about to hear actually happened. It happened in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's authentic and is offered as a tribute to the men and women of the great American newspapers. From the pages of Las Vegas Review Journal, the story of a reporter who was a witness to a drama of violence and death. Las Vegas, Nevada. The story as it actually happened. John F. Kalin's story as he lived it. It's a hot morning in Las Vegas. Outside police headquarters, you, Johnny Kalin, take a quick look at the thermometer. 102 degrees. You can feel the baked air coming in from the Nevada desert. Inside police chief Warren's office, you can feel the heat even with the electric fan going. Yeah, why don't you go home, sit in a nice bath? It's too hot to work, Johnny. Huh? I gotta make my daily check, Chief. Any car thefts, assaults, drunk drivers, or something any different for a change? There's the charge book. Another shoplifter last night. Ah, I gotta lose some weight, Johnny. This heat is too much. Well, maybe the rain cool off some. Yeah, that's trouble. Why? Phone ringing in the morning is always trouble. Hello. Chief Warren speaking. What? Okay, I got it. Hold everything. I'm coming right out. What's up? A redhead. Some woman. Dead on the outskirts of the city. You'll find her in a black sedan. You and Police Chief Warren. A red-headed woman. Shot dead on the back seat. Who is she? No purse, no wallet, nothing to identify her. All you have is the license of the car. And you check it to find out who owns it. Scott Whitty. That's the owner. Age 31, 6 feet 1, weight 175, eyes blue, hair blonde. Hmm. Sounds like a pretty one. He's pretty, all right. Checked his address, too, from the license records. The clerk at his hotel says he was the handsome type. Hotel? What hotel? A flea bag on the south side. It's his car? Yeah. Well, did you get him, Chief? No. Hotel clerk tells me this Scott drove away alone last night. I haven't seen him since. I don't get it. If he beat it, why should he ditch his own car? What was he going to do, walk across the desert? Well, he could have gotten himself a lift. No, still, it doesn't make sense. Killing never makes sense. You think he did it, Chief? I don't know. First, we got to find Scott Whitty. Then I'll have your answer. <laughs> All the way back to your office, Johnny Kalen, you ask yourself, what about that car? Why did he ditch it, leaving a clue as big as that? Nothing to trace the ownership of a car. Is Scott Whitty just dumb? Well, you can ask questions, but you can't find the answers. You sit at your desk in the study room of the Review Journal and begin to write your story when... Why, what's up? We got another dead one. What? A man. He's just been shot dead. Two killings in one day. In a town of 8,500. Jackpot. You rush out thinking of the banner headline you'll be writing. And suddenly, halfway to the railroad station, it pops into your head. Scott Whitty. Is it Scott Whitty? Is it him, Chief? Who? Scott Whitty. No, Scott. No, it's a locomotive farmer named Joe Merritt. Shot by a fellow named Floyd Farnell. What gave you the idea it was this Whitty? No, I don't know. Just a guess. Broad daylight this happened. I 
talking. The next thing people see is Final whipping out a gun and firing point blank at Merritt. Where's Final now? He ran, they tell me. He's wearing a white shirt and brown pants. Chief, Chief Warren. Ah. I got something to tell you. Who are you? I work in the railroad yards. Listen, I just saw Floyd Farnell. I know where he is. Oh, yeah. I followed him after the shooting. He ran into a bar on Fremont Street. <laughs> Fremont Street, the main thoroughfare in Las Vegas. Traffic is heavy, people shopping. The ordinary events of the day go on for them. But nothing's ordinary for you today, Johnny Kalen. You move swiftly and silently toward the bar with Chief Warren and the man who followed Farno. Mm. You better stay outside, Johnny. This is no part of your job. No, I want to go in with you. Well, there might be trouble. He has a gun. I, I want to go in with you, Chief, but I'll be careful. I promise. This is it, Chief. This is the bar. I saw him go in. Okay, monsieur. Thanks. Johnny, you'll keep him back of me. Johnny. Okay. I promise. All right. Come on. Let's go in. <laughs> From bright sunlight into a dimly lit bar. You're almost blinded as you step inside. You can hear a jukebox playing, but you can't see a thing. Your blood chills, realizing that you're a target for the killer who's in here. But only the jukebox booms. There's no roar of a gun. I can't see, Chief. Wait a second. All right, we'll get adjusted. Final? Is your name Floyd Farnell? What about it? You killed a man, mister. A Joe Merritt. Did I? You were seen. Come along quiet, mister. I'm police. I ain't finished my drink. Another time, maybe. Right now, you come along. A man's got a right to finish his drink first. That's the least a man's got a right to do. You gotta do things proper. I and I always do things proper. I got a gun on you. I need it, mister. I'm all finished, but I still need it. Give it up. You got a gun, too, I see. Yeah, I got a gun. Now, give me yours. Don't try anything funny. Throw it on the bar. Put that gun down. Why? So I keep on living? What for, mister? I've had enough of it. Men, women, uh, wives. Here's mud in your eyes. Give me that gun. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the Presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He was a United States Senator and served as Minister to both France and Great Britain. He was twice elected Governor of the State of Virginia. He served as Secretary of State and Secretary of War, and in 1816 became President. During his two terms, many important events took place, including the acquisition of Florida from Spain and the admission of Mississippi, Illinois, Alabama, Maine, and Missouri. You should have his name by now, but if you don't, here's an important clue. His statement that no encroachment of foreign powers on either North or South America would be tolerated is known as the Monroe Doctrine. Yes, he was James Monroe, fifth president of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. This is Cy Harris returning you to your narrator and the big story of Johnny Kalan as he lived it and wrote it. Three corpses in one day. A red-headed woman and two men who only a short time before were walking along like friends. Three corpses. Plus a missing man named Scott Whitty. How many big stories drop into a newspaper man's lap in one day? Or is it only one story? You contact your desk, Johnny Kalen, and then along with Chief Warren, you go to inform the two widows. You visit Mrs. Merritt first. I, I can't believe it. 
I can't. It's true, Mrs. May. Sorry. Floyd Farno shot your husband. But he was here. Early this morning, Floyd came in. He had breakfast with us. Then he and my husband walked downtown. Was there anything wrong between them? No. What did they talk about? About, about railroad matters. He, Floyd, he was going to quit his job. Take his wife back to Idaho. There was no trouble between them. Are you sure of that? No, there wasn't. There was no reason for Floyd to kill my husband. Or kill himself? Look, Mrs. Mallard, it doesn't make sense. There must have been something between them. A man doesn't use a gun the way Floyd Farnell did without a reason. Maybe it was money. Maybe your husband owed him money. He had a good job, my husband. Made good money. He wasn't in debt to anybody. Maybe it was over some woman? What? I I don't like to say things like this, Mrs. Mallard. I, I mean, I, I, I don't like to hurt anybody's feelings, but... Could it be trouble over a woman? Joe had nothing to do with Mrs. Farnell. My husband wouldn't have anything to do with that kind of woman. We were good, respectable people. No. You've got nerve trying to shame the dead. You get out of no, here. Now, now, wait a minute, Mrs. Mallard. There's no cause to get excited. We, we've got to ask questions. All right. I know she... She ran around with lots of men, but not with my husband. She's no good. She's just no good. You haven't had much of an opinion of Mrs. Farnell. Why should I? Have you seen her? You told her? No, we, uh, we came here first. <laughs> She'll be glad. You'll see. Glad that Floyd is dead. But Floyd would go away and she'd run around with everyone and anyone working in the railroad yard. She and her red hair. The what? Red hair. Fix it because Claudia Farnell is no good. Red hair. Red hair. Yeah. Mrs. Merritt, you come on downtown with us. Sedan? No. He... Floyd. He shot her, too. I don't know yet. You sure this is Claudia Farnell, Floyd's wife? I'm sure. That's her. She's not so pretty now, is she? Wait. Don't cover her up yet. Why? I never liked her, but... Poor woman. Sorry for her now. Good or bad, it's... Terrible when you die. But they are dead. And suddenly there's a mob of questions to answer. You write your story, Johnny Kalen, naming all three persons who died today. And then you go down to police headquarters. This thing is still definitely a mystery. Where's the Scott Woody, Chief? What's he got to do with it? Uh, I don't know, John. I've got no answer yet to that statewide alarm. Who killed Claudia Farnham? Look, 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 look. Why don't you just sit down and cool off a bit? And Joe Merritt, was there anything between him and Claudia? Oh, you sure got a million questions, haven't you, Johnny? Well, why not, haven't you? I mean, is, is everything simple and straight in your mind? Now, look, I've been a cop a long time. I've learned patience. I've got a quiet, patient mind. I've got no newspaper deadline to meet, Johnny. Nothing right now is either simple or straight to me. Why? Because I don't know. When I get my facts, I'll decide. I'll tell you one thing, though. What? The fact that I'm waiting for is Scott Whitty. I think that's the boy that's got all the answers. I wonder. Maybe the more we learn about Claudia Farnell, the more pieces of this puzzle will come together. Where can you learn more about Claudia Farnell, Johnny Kalen? Where? You remember something that Mrs. Merritt said. She'd run around with everyone and anyone in the railroad yards. The yards. The Union Pacific Railroad Yards. You make your way down there fast, and you start to ask around. You're the reporter, ain't you? One who was around when Joe Merritt got shot? That's right. Don't you remember me? I'm the guy who told you where Floyd Farnell was. In that bar? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Guess when I'm all greased up and in overalls like this, I ain't good for recognizing her. You knew both of them pretty well, huh? Oh, sure. Worked with Joe on short hauls. You knew Claudia Farmer? Well, did you? Well, look, I don't like to say things bad about anybody, mister. Especially when it... Uh... Listen, all I'm trying to do is dig up facts. I'm not interested in gossip. Why was Claudia killed? Who killed her? That's what I'm trying to find out. Okay. What do you want to know? Was there anything between Claudia and Joe Merrick? They went on dates together. Did Floyd Farnell know? I ain't spreading gossip. Listen, three people are dead. One man is missing. Missing? Who? A fellow named Scott Woody. Scott? I saw him two nights ago. You know him? Sure I know him. He had dates with Claudia, too. All right, all right. He's another. I guess everybody had dates with her. I saw Scott Woody two nights ago in a sagebrush cafe. He was there with Claudia. <laughs> Funny part of it is, though, Floyd was there, too. <laughs> The Sagebrush Cafe is a mile out of town, an adobe building built on the edge of the desert. You drive out fast, Johnny Kalen, feeling excited. The three of them together, two nights ago. And yesterday morning, Claudia was found dead. And in the afternoon, another death and a suicide. Maybe Chief Warren is right. Find Scott Whitty, and the mystery comes clear. Only the bartenders in the cafe. It's early afternoon. It's hot. Business will pick up when it gets cool. Right now, it's a perfect time for questions. Johnny Kalen? Of the Las Vegas Review Journal. Reporter, huh? Yeah, and I've got some questions about a group of people who were out here two nights ago. Two men and a woman. The uh, woman was a redhead. Uh-huh. I remember them. Are they in trouble? If they are, I ain't surprised. Haven't you seen the papers today? No, nope, not yet. Yeah, they're in trouble, all right. Uh, look, uh, what do you remember about them? Well, they acted funny, all right. Three people sat down for beers. They're friendly. They laugh. Have a good time. Not these three. And I was sure surprised when the older guy called the redhead his wife. I was sure she and the handsome young guy would be the ones who were hooked. They sat at that table there by the bar. And it wasn't so hard. Another beer for me and my wife. You can have one, too, Scott. You can live off of me, too. Let's go home, Floyd. We're having a party. Don't you like parties? You're getting drunk. Yep. A quiet, slow, careful drunk. You ain't drinking, Scott? I... I've had enough. Why? Because I'm back home? I ain't running any freight somewhere into Arizona tonight? Look, I... Uh, I didn't want to come out in the first place. We're all friends, ain't we? And I wanted fun. And you've got a car. It's a favor you're doing me. Taking me and my wife out for a time. How come you got no woman of your own, Scott? Look, Floyd, how about cutting it out, huh? I wasn't so dead certain about Claudia here loving me. I, I think she'd fall for you. Oh, but she's the faithful kind. Shut up, Floyd. Come on, take me home. Yeah. Okay. You're going home. We're all going home. Are you okay, Floyd? Hey, Scott, ain't she a real ever-loving wife? Look how she's concerned about me. Okay. Come on. Let's go home. They walk out of this place after that without a word. Then comes the funny part. Funny part? Yeah. An hour later, he came back. Walked in here again. Alone? No, he had the redhead with him. And you know something? He had changed his shirt. Wait a minute, wait a minute. One thing at a time. He came back with his wife. It wasn't the Scott with them? No, they were alone. And he changed his shirt? Yeah. He had a green sports shirt on the first time. When he came back, he was wearing a white one. What happened then? Nothing. They just sat for a couple hours, talking and drinking. Oh, yeah, the redhead was very nervous. Finally, they went out. I saw him drive off in a black sedan. A black? They, they drove away in a black sedan? Yeah, why? Buy tomorrow's paper. And you'll see why. This bartender told you all this, Johnny? Uh-huh. Yeah, 
begins to bring the pieces together. It's beginning to make sense. How? I'll bet Farnell killed his wife. And why? Jealousy. Well, I got a ballistics report. The same gun killed a redhead, Joe Merritt and Floyd Farnell. You see? But where's Scott Whitty? I don't think you'll find Scott Whitty, Chief. For my money, I'll bet Scott Whitty's dead. Oh, now, don't you go theorizing on me, Johnny. I think it was all carefully planned. Careful now. You're going out on a limb, boy. A cold-blooded, deliberate wiping out of people by Floyd Farnell. People running around with his wife. He meets Joe Merritt at breakfast, walks him to work, and kills him. He has Scott go out with him and his wife. And killed Scott? Sure. I'll bet he made Claudia watch while he shot Woody. The first time they left the bar, he stopped someplace and shot him. Then he brought her back to the bar, drank some more, and then later put a bullet in Claudia's head. Are you serious? Dead serious. It was a plan, Chief, a deliberate plan. I wouldn't be surprised if part of it was the killing of himself. Oh, listen, this man's just a railroad worker, not a horror story writer. Oh, I'll bet, Chief, I'll bet... Chief Warren speaking. What? Where? Okay, I'll be right out. Somebody just came across a body in the desert. Scott Whitty, shot in the head. You ride out with Chief Warren into the hot desert. The air bakes and shimmers. You get out a few miles along the desert road, and in a ditch, there's the body. And nearby, you find something more. A shirt. A green sports shirt. The blood all dried on it. Mm. Bartender said Floyd was wearing a green sports shirt the first time. Look at this. What's that? A notebook in the pocket. What's in it? Nothing, else. Wait. Here's something on the front page. What? Their initials. J.M. Joe Merritt. S. W. Scott Woody. C. F. Claudia Farnell. Look on the next page. F. F. Floyd Farnell, his own... Yeah, a list. A list of victims to be killed. Nothing else in the book but those initials. Now, do you agree that this was all planned, Chief? Yeah, I guess you're right. All planned. Yeah, planned and carried out with a bang. The story of Floyd Farnell was the most puzzling and bloodiest to ever hit Las Vegas. The discovery of Scott Woody's body and the notebook in Floyd Farnell's shirt pocket definitely tied up all loose ends in the case. And so ends another big story. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic big story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed with the exception of the newspaper reporter. Presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.